In this video, I'm going to talk about print supports in Cure. Now, first things first. Supports are a pain in the ass. They increase the print time, they are hard to remove, and sometimes they just break your print. Unfortunately, they are a necessary evil, and we'll need to find a way to make supports work for us. I'm going to show you a few settings in Cure that can make your supports a little bit more manageable. We'll run a few test prints on this stock Ender 3. The bed has been leveled. The E-steps have been calibrated. The flow rate has been set. I've determined the right temperature and retraction. I've calibrated the X, Y, and Z steps for the dimensional accuracy. So let's grab some test pieces, jump into Cura, and get your printer pushing plastic. The first test piece we'll look at is this one. It has a T-shaped top. It's supported on a square post and a base down here at the bottom. I'll post the link in the description where you can download this. It does have some wicked overhang, so obviously we'll need some supports. And we'll turn them on by checking this box. I'm going to leave the support structure at normal and the support placement as everywhere. And we'll slice it. And it's going to take us two hours and 18 minutes to print. Since we have the support placement set to everywhere, we can see the support is even placed on the top side of our base. This supports the overhangs above. Now, let's change the support placement to touching build plate. This is going to keep the support off of our model. Let's slice this one up and see what happens. Now we're down to 1 hour and 59 minutes. That saved us 19 minutes. But you'll also notice the supports are no longer sitting on the model base, but we are still supported at the top, except where the overhang meets the square column. Now I'm confident I can make that bridge. So with this simple change, we save some time and we'll have a cleaner print. Now let's change the support structure to tree, and we'll put the support placement back to everywhere. We'll slice this one up, and it's going to take one hour and 20 minutes to print. Now, even though we set Cura to place the supports everywhere, we can see that it still avoided the base. Now I'm going to change the support placement to touching bed plate. We'll slice this up. One hour, 18 minutes. Our tree support basically looks the same. I'm going to move a little bit down into the model so we can see what these tree supports look like. It's basically a single wall structure, kind of like when you print in vase mode. This makes them easy to remove and break away from the print. I like tree supports. I'm gonna print off two different versions and we'll see how easy each one is to break away. Here we have our test pieces. This one here is support everywhere. You can see where it's covering up the bottom of the base a little bit. And I use the pliers to try to wiggle these loose. They're on there pretty good. So I'm going to take the X-Acto knife and see if I can't pry it loose up in here. This is a common problem when people first start printing. Their supports are just real hard to get them off. You, you gotta make adjustments with your settings. There we go. There's one. And I got the feeling I'm gonna have to do this for all of them.
got to do this carefully so you don't break your model. Here's two. Once I hear that little crack, and I start trying to work it loose. Three. So far, so good. We haven't broken our model yet. I think this is pretty much demonstrating the purpose of this video, making them easier to remove. Also, be careful not to cut yourself. Need to start coming off. All right, now we got to Now they were pretty pretty hard to get off. You had a more delicate model, you probably would have broke it. Doesn't look too bad. We have a few little nubs down in this area. A few strings. You cut them off. Another thing I like to do is keep a set of files handy. And file them up right off. And you can see those nubs cleaned up pretty good. There's a few there. Not too bad. Let's move on to the one with the tree supports. This one, I'm not even touching the tools. You can see, you can pretty much work those off with your fingers. If they do get tight, you can always use your razor. But you see how much easier that was to get them off our model's looking pretty good at the overhangs. It wasn't touching the base, so we're clean there. Like I said before, I like tree supports. Now let's take a look at our second test model. I'll post a link for this one down in the description so you can go ahead and download it if you want. I like this one as a test model. Of course, if we were printing this for any other reason than a support test, I'd go ahead and flip it over and print it without supports, but we're here to test supports, so let's go with it. I'm going to leave the support structure set to normal and the support placement set to everywhere for the rest of this video. Let's slice this and have a look at it. It's going to take us 50 minutes to print at the default settings. I think we can beat that and make the supports easier to remove. The first thing I want to do is change the support pattern from zigzag to lines. This will save us some time and here's why. As you can see it's sliced with zigzag and having a look you'll notice those double walls. So in this case there's a triple wall. They aren't everywhere but as the zigzag pattern is created it makes a lot of double walls. We don't need those. So let's change those to line from zigzag to lines and we'll re-slice that and now we're down to all single walls and we saved three minutes off the print time next let's look at our support density we're at 20 percent you'll notice there's seven support walls one two three four five six seven seven interior support walls in this area Let's change that support density down to 10% and re-slice it. Now you'll notice we're down to three interior walls and we knocked another minute off of our print time. So let's move down and take a look at our support interface pattern. Currently, it's set at grid. The support interface pattern is this purple-like area. I'm going to change the pattern from zigzag, or I'm going to change it from grid to zigzag. 
We'll re-slice this. And now you can see we have a lot more area making up the support area without increasing the time. But you know what? Why stop there? Let's change the support interface density from 33 and a third down to 12%. We'll re-slice this. We still have decent support structure, but we knocked another minute from our print time for a total of five minutes. Now, five minutes doesn't seem like much, but this is a small print. On larger prints, we can change these changes can mean savings of hours. Another quick change you can make. It's not going to save you time on this print, but others it it might. Typically, I'll run my support overhang angle at 55 degrees. I know I can do that based off some tests I ran before. If you want to experiment, start with 50 degrees and re-slice it. Let's print these out and see what we got. So here's our second test piece. I printed this one using the standard Cura default settings. This one was with the settings we've changed along the way. Let's start with the standard and see how easy they are to remove. I'll start with this overhang here, and that's not breaking off real easy. I'm just gonna grab a pair of needle nose pliers, and see if I can't break that off. And not doing too good with those. There we go. This one, can't get them with the pliers. You can actually cut them using your nippers that came with your printer. But even still, a lot of times that's gonna be hard to get at. So I go back to my old trusty Exacto knife and pull those off. We have that one. We have another one over here we gotta work off. Be careful not to cut yourself doing this. The big thing is don't break your model. Wink. Now we have this one for the hole. Okay, that one came out pretty easy. Now when you're Printing holes, whether you got supports or not, one of the tools I do keep around is a simple deburring tool. I got this off of Amazon. And to clean up anything you might have in there, I just put it in and give it a couple turns. All right, let's go on to our test piece with our settings and see what we can break away by hand or do we need tools? Well, that one came off pretty easy. as did that one, and you compare those two surfaces. We're looking pretty clean on both. Take off this corner piece, that's the largest of them. I'm able to break that off by hand. The one with the, for the hole, I'm probably gonna need pliers or tweezers just because there's not any room to grab into, so. And that pulled off. Got a little bit of support still laying in there. And that's where you take your deburring tool. Clean that up. Couple turns. Each side. And you'll be good. Firstly, I think the supports that we did with our new settings came off a lot easier. We reduced our printing time. We didn't lose any print quality. See a little bit up in this area, but we have that with both prints up and down here. I'm thinking that this one looks better, which is our settings. And as far as our hole, I think we look pretty good there. I could do a little bit more cleanup. Overall, I like 
The new settings we put in there are a lot better. I can clean any of this little nubs up with a file, an exacto knife, or a piece of sandpaper. I like our new settings. So we looked at normal and tree supports. We saw the effects of using supports everywhere compared to just touching the build plate. We made a few simple changes to the default settings in Cura. It reduced our print time and it made them easier to remove. Now, don't be afraid to experiment with the Cura support settings. See what you can make them do for you. I'd love to hear about your results down below in the comments. Now, I hope you found this information useful. If you did, I'd like to hear about that down in the comments too. Please hit that like button, smash the bell, be your own hero, live your life one layer at a time, and please don't forget to subscribe.